Artenstein, 32 Stephanie Pop, 36 Elisabeth Schwarz, 37 Denise Schmutz, 44 Daniela Neunteufel, 52 Theresa Vian, 64 Doris Neuberger, 70 Monika Spöttel, 77 Sabine Führer und 93 uh, Decker Nausika. So, before we're going to introduce now the, uh, the Danish team, let's see what the game is bringing. So far we are in the midfield, still looking for the list of the... Uh, of the Danish girls, of course, we also want to introduce you to uh, the Amerga team. And if I find the time here, I'm going to start now to introduce the ladies from Amerga. If you can see the numbers, you can follow your players. It will be number two, Perniel Lina Jensen, number six, May Lindberg Hansen, number 11, uh, Marianne Heidam, 25, Joanne Bress Wegeberg, number four, Dina Iverson. 19 Laila List, 95 Mille Rutfeld and 96 Marie Christine Lundius. I'm with in, you in a second. I'm just answering yeah, no some problem. of the questions. No, we the are chat. here and we see a, from the beginning like the, the Danish team here trying to find a decision quite early in the match. So they're starting attacking massively. And I think this is also a quite good strategy as you are being here just with eight or nine players. I think eight players there this year. Eight, yeah. So, of course, you may be, it may be that you're running out of, of stamina, of brief, of condition. Um, as long as the game is taking place, we are playing it two times. Ten minutes, time is running. No stop and we're seeing here. Oh, no, no, sorry uh, for that. So, it was the Vienna team starting here to attack. So, it's like the Danish girls here in white. Being in the defense, so Vienna is here rising or starting their first attacks. And now we're seeing here the Danish girls from Amaga, first time being in the opponent side of the pool. So of course, I think from a from a strategic perspective, it will be quite helpful for for um, for uh, the the Vienna girls just to keep the pressure, just to keep the ball down at the bottom. Because of course, on a long time perspective, there might be upcoming gaps here at the Danish girls, nevertheless, the Danish girls surprised us super often with their, with their yes, motivation, yeah. with their like let's say. Look, before they were playing against uh, who was the team? Oh God, I don't have this in my mind anymore. Mm -mm. They played against the Black Mermaids. Yeah, in the exactly. One and the Black Mermaid had had like six minutes the ball in their corner, mm -hmm. like exactly where it's in and now, and they did a counter attack and within two minutes they score. And they won the game at the end. But this is how, I, to be honest, I also think this is something. Um, Amaga looks never... super comfortable in no. the defense, uh -huh. to be honest. So this is not a team being stressed when they need to when they need to uh, take their goalie position. So it seems like that they're really willing to do this. So okay, we will going to defend. Just let them play around. Just yeah. let them attack. And from the moment we're getting the ball in our basket, we're starting our counter yes. attack, and we are not doing this. And for our we goal, are going back to the basket, with eight waiting players, for them again. That's very efficient way yeah. because otherwise, if they're going to be swimming behind yeah. the ball, then it's going to be very, very exhausting for them. So I'm also, forwards. I'm also predicting that this match will be mostly like taking part on the on the Amiga side of the field, not why. Because they are weaker, it's just a matter of their strategy. You see them, they are really probably lying here at their basket and it looks a bit relaxed. So they are super comfortable with staying underwater long. And it's just when an attacker comes, you see the goalkeeper here just easily with the feet. She is making a bit space, pushing a bit away. So the Vienna player has to swim more, has, is losing more brief. It's more stressful for the attacker here. And this also shows how well experienced these players here from Amaga are. So like this coolness they're having here in the water, you see their acting, their movements are not super quick. Because yes. this is wasting time, or this uh, is wasting like energy, power, energy. Because yes. that's just now, even... Now they're so then they counter attack with all they have and they put the energy on those attacks coming one after another one, going in one, two, three seconds, no to go back. And they keep in very close proximity, one and a half meters away, and keep passing the ball. So uh, they did that with Black Mermaids this morning, and after a few waves of attack, I would say four or five, they score. So this is what uh, Vienna needs to have. Look, you have the, the Marianne, uh, the the, um, uh, the the captain was almost about to steal the basket, and we have now. Uh, if you would Vienna. like, if you would like, sink it though. If I would like. Comp 
Let me compare both teams in, I mean, in, in the language of boxing. Please. You have here, like, for example, the Vienna team. You will see it's a guild boxer. He's trying to make a lot of hits. He's trying to go by the points, so, so hitting a lot. While yeah. on the other side, you see the Amaga girls. Like, it's more heavyweight, <laughs> so they're trying to, like, make one heavy punch. So and they're just out. waiting. They're just waiting <laughs> for, for the, the for this one shot and like bam, hitting very hard. And this is what we've seen here. When they're coming to the basket, they are very hard. Yeah. And on the other side, you see the Vienna girls. They're coming always, like again yeah. and again and again and again. This will be the big difference between the both. Yes. We will not see a lot of chances here from the Amaga girls, but when it will be super dangerous on the other side, we will see like the Vienna girls here attacking frequently the goal from Amaga and then at the end it will show us what will be the better strategy. The one like let's say heavy hit or like the, the, the many punches at, at actions. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, what, it's a, a nice comparison. Now we have the attacker with the ball on the head sign from Amagar, and now she's a bit tackled away, but she could pass it down. Did she reach their other Amagar girl? Yes. And they're still attacking again and passing, it, passing but the ball got intercepted by Vienna. In this way, I mean, they have been more effective than Black Reds defending this morning. So... Um, now Vienna is counter-attacking, but uh, slowly, I mean, the Amaga team is already in position. And uh, let's see, we have one of the attackers trying to, to advance, but being stopped by the defender. Now we have two, three Vienna girls and three Amagas, one right, left and center. And they're over the corner, still fighting. And... Um, Great recovery by the white team that is trying to counter-attack. Yeah, the Vienna uh, team needs to take care here to not losing the ball that easy. Oh, They need to consider that the Amaga girls here with, with less players and then they just need to be more clever. Here, for example, yeah. they just yeah. attack the neck. So attacking the head or the neck. So it will be a free throw for Amaga here. Right now, so Amaga is doing this super nice. You see the coolness in the water. You see that they are not... It looks like yeah, they're, they're like, super relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's super great to watch it. Of course, there might be also a certain level of respect on the side of Vienna. They're still not that, that ex like experienced in this business. So it's still their second or third participation here at the Champions Cup for Vienna. Vienna, yes, about. They, 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 they're well, the you see, for example, Amaga five, already yeah. playing like in final rounds and, and gaining here like uh, poke holds and medals. So, um, yeah. Colin? No. What was it? Is that, is, why do you think they did not let that advance? Because, I mean, advantage. Because yeah, yeah. there was a, a, an it's a good question. It's a good question. It's, because it's they different just from, from referee to referee. To be honest, sometimes I'm also wondering a, a why chance. they're not giving, why they're not letting them play. Nevertheless, you see here, like, all five, five players here from from Vienna were waiting at the surface. And with the signal, they're coming down. Now we have this the first massive attack here from Vienna. But well here, the, the captain of Amager here is super physically like stopping the yeah, attack, just, just clearing the situation. She's like crapping the she ball. She has been playing the Champions Cup since I used to play, and this is around 18 years ago. Crazy, so. crazy. <laughs> but she's very also strong there. and very good player, yep. Very experienced. She's now, um, let's see, where's the ball? I mean, with a very tight fight at the basket. And uh, I think, yeah, the Vienna girl had uh, stolen the basket for a second there, but Amaga recovered, and now, well, they're again in a position, but that was a very good attack from Vienna. And that's the end of the and first half. And there we have it, half-time break. They haven't, I mean, this is the first time with a really, really attack consequently and very, very close, so that it was uh, very dangerous for Amaga for a second there. They recovered just on the last minute, but it almost was a goal for Vienna. So let's see what the second half brings, because um, now it's a very, very tight game. Uh, the Vienna team needs to be very careful with those uh, knockout punches coming from Amaga that are going to be the counterattacks. But uh, Amaga now needs to really watch out 
because uh, they were uh, the, the the attack from the other team was a little bit uh, more uh, dangerous. So yep. I'm standing yep. that I cannot see it anymore. So we uh, have seen like more... one like the last action from Vienna. We have seen all five players at the surface. They were waiting for the referee call. Then they executed this re throw by coming all together down to the surface. This was the only let's say good chance here from Vienna. But on the other side, we have seen more opportunities on Amaga's side here to score the first. Yes. Um, goal here of the match, so let's say. But the the, the attack from Vienna was more dangerous. They yeah, went. you think so? Yeah, I, mean, I the, think the, this the, one initiated from Leila List was, was also quite good. If to be honest, so she came from above and there was a ball next to the basket and. Yeah, but it was a moment. But Vienna yeah, was, was right there for almost two minutes, yeah, and the basket was empty for a minute there, mm -hmm. and Mariana just saved the, just saved the it, goal yeah. in the very last I agree, second. I agree. So I don't know. It's really like one and a half minutes from half time. Yeah. Uh, people are asking about the next matches, so let's inform you what's coming up. Here we are watching the girls of Amaga and Vienna uh, to decide the um, fourth and fifth uh, place. Now, after that, we have uh, the um, semi-final. I mean, the Molde against uh, Hemelina uh, in the male category for the for the is the final for the third position. After that, we have the final of the women between Langen and Akaren. They're going to be also playing for first and second place. Orcas has played already yesterday against Langen and lost. This morning at 10 o'clock against Akaren and lost. So they already made the third place. Remember, we had this triangular between the women. And then the final that is going to be taking place between Malsh and Orcas at 3.15 Uh, this afternoon. Así que para los colombianos que están escuchando, las niñas jugaron a las 6 de la mañana. Ellas estuvieron un partido ayer contra Langen que perdieron eh, 1 a 0. Hoy por la mañana a las 10 jugaron contra Karen que perdieron 2 a 0. Recuerden que estaban jugando en un triangular y como ya perdieron los dos partidos, están en el en la tercer eh, lugar. La final va a ser jugada entre Langen y Karen y ese partido va a definir quién es el primero y el segundo puesto, mientras que Orcas Masculino hoy a las 8 y media de la mañana jugó la semifinal contra eh, Gemelina, contra los finlandeses, y ganaron 2 a 0. Entonces están en la final contra Malsch, el equipo alemán que ganó a las 8 de la mañana contra Molde por 1 a 0. La final Malsch uh, Orca se, lo va, se va a hacer jugada a las 3 y cuarto. And we are back on the game. We are back on the game, second half here. We see the ladies from Vienna in blue against the ladies from Copenhagen, in Amaga, Denmark in white. And it's the second half we have seen a 0-0 match in the first half that was still super exciting uh, some physical attacks here from Amaga where we have seen a long pressure period here on the other side from Vienna uh, close to the half time break and now we will see um, what's going on in the second half we we see here the Amaga ladies tough team but just here with eight players while we have a full squad here uh, of Vienna and now here Vienna is like the starting team here but this was the same pattern as we had it in the first half this is even something that can be could be expected before like Amager is a team feeling super comfortable in the defense saying like okay we are just eight players let them come let them like let them, uh, swim. Let let them, them try tired. we're going to defend them let them get tired and then it's our time to go there yeah because they're really really efficient in close in close proximity look at this they just recovered the ball it was one try uh. grab the arm grab the ball and they're in position and now they're trying to start the counter attack so they're i mean i'm it's very nice to watch uh, how efficient they are how they play you know the resources they have you know as, as they, they care <laughs> as much as they can mm, referee goal something free throw against Aus the Austrian team the Vienna yeah now you see here they're taking their time they're taking the brief they're just eight players in the water they're organizing themselves now they're with three players down Amerga trying here with double passes to gain some space but very well, well done here by Vienna they're also super super focused and coming up to also seeing the Vienna girls we have seen this in games before always with four players under the surface this is yep. from a training really, from yeah. a from a stamina perspective this is super hard to to manage this For this, this is the last game of the competition the most difficult one they exhausted yeah. after two and a half days of competition and now you see again the 
Amaga Gertz here. Will they go here for the first attack? We see here number 19 trying to come from above. Lila List. And here number two, Pernil Linard Jensen from above. Passing the ball down, and there it is! The first score here! First goal from Dina Iverson, the goalkeeper here. Scored after the pass from, was it Marie? I need to see it again. It's number two here, bringing the ball on the other side of the basket. And then it's Dina Iverson. She's pulling the goalkeeper away and pushing the ball into the basket. So Pernil Leonard Jensen assisted Dina Iverson here and she scored it a 1-0 in favor for Amaga. And now it's a little bit more hectic all the game now. Vienna is coming with everything. They're trying to make a speed uh, attack and create some more chaos uh, at the um, area of Amaga. Let's see if they succeed. They kind of woke up because until now they were moving a little bit more cautious. I mean, they were swimming a lot, but now you can tell, you know, this is spritz of adrenaline when something went wrong yep. and then you want to make it good again. So um, let's see. Uh, they have to be very careful, uh, the Danish girls, because uh, now it is going to be intense. And it's five minutes uh, because minutes the Vienna well, yeah. girls, what I love from them, there is also in Graz, uh, some of the playing the Austrian team is they keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting. So probably they're going to, you know, put up a notch and now a mug and it's to really let them come the same, but you know, you need to stay very much focused because it still can score maybe one or even two goals if they make a mistake. So now they're in the middle, there's a pulk of people moving around in the surface. Uh, there's the captain from the Amaga team. And then, okay, the ball was recovered by the uh, Austrian team. And now they're in the surface, almost above the basket of Amaga. And let's see if the Austrians can really start an attack or if, you know, again, they have a pull and they're moving toward the middle of the pool again. Mm. Yeah, no, the, the, the game is like, of course, for the Amaga ladies here. Like, let's say there's a certain focus, of course, to stop the game flow. Yeah, it's here to keep the ball in their position. You see Lila List now going down, but I don't... It will, I would wonder if they would really go the extra mile here now, attacking the basket. Maybe they would just play around, keeping the ball passing around, just just forcing the Vienna team to stay underwater, staying close to the basket. Nevertheless, you see it here. The distance here to the basket is far enough, so it's close enough to keep the... The, the Vienna the, busy, yeah, busy, but, but not far risky away. Enough, and, exactly. yeah. Now they're coming. Maybe here you see Lila this, but they're uh, stopping. Oh, oh, passing the ball down here to number Pernil. two. Pernil. Here Lila Liss assisting Pernil Lina Jensen, and she's trying to score here, but well defended here by Vienna. So far, we don't see the second goal, but they're still going to attack here now with 25. Joanna Bress Wegenberg, who tries here now to score. When I, to be honest, really wondering why, why Amager is here. Maybe it's they're more comfortable with a 2 0. Oh. What happened? Yeah, I was surprised because normally when you are winning 1 0 and the other team is tied, then you yeah. try not to risk the ball to lose it. Um. At least you need to know that they're super comfortable in the defense. Like, it's not that they were saying, okay, oh, no, we should just stay in defense. Uh, they will go on a score. It's just like, okay, they will never score against us if we just focus on defense. Because sometimes it's, or often, it's super hard to play both. Of course, you're focusing on the defense, but you also need to score. So you need to put some effort uh, in your offense. You need to risk something. And sometimes this risk turns into a, yeah, in a counter attack. But here it is like, okay, we have this comfortable lead. Let's just let them come. There are three minutes yeah, to go. Yeah. Of course, if you're doing, a, if you're scoring the 2-0, the I'll game is over. It's better if they try to do the things. This is yep. more, more, <laughs> it's more it's, interesting the game. But for our spectators yeah. and the audience, it's not. Too, it's definitely better, better if they start. If they keep going like attacking, yep. here it is. 15 it's seconds. Nice. It's the same time like out for Vienna. For Vienna, it's the same like it's sort of the Colombian way. I mean, I also have seen the Orcas winning and still keep playing and attacking you know, without any restrictions. And I think that's 
nice to do because a lot of teams do another the other tactic, as you say. They withdraw a little bit and they play safe, like Germans yeah. tend to do that. A and there is a freeze throw now for Vienna. So let's see again. You see all five. You see the five players here at the surface, and probably with the signal, they were all going down. You see it here, left, right side, like a triangle here. Now they're diving down, but there's just one player from Copenhagen here enough to stop this attack from the three. Now they're with two, even. And they are in ball possession right now. So this was not well done, executed by Vienna here. They tried like a team attack from above, but the well-experienced Danish players here are super well prepared. They were not surprised. There's oh, oh no, we see here. From Vienna, but a fast break. Is Great. right there, right there, intercepting. Well, interception. Uh, still, we have three, four Austrian girls. They are trying to get closer, but the forechecking of the Danish team is really someone hold the basket. And oh, that's a pity. You know, you are creating yeah. such an attack, and one of the forwards that are like position made yeah. the mistake of yeah. holding or pushing. Super stressful, it's super, super and frustrating. It's really frustrating because super now they have to start all over again, and they have two and a half minutes to go. That's not a lot of time. So. You need to be really careful. Time out. And there's a time out for Amaga. Amaga. Two minutes, 30 seconds left here in the second half. We have seen at a, a, a first half without any goals. And then we have a super have seen a super exciting second half here. We have seen this uh, team attack. Initially, it was Perniel Linet Jensen. She attacked from the open side of the basket. She, she uh, went up and she passed the ball on the other side where she found pass receiver Dina Iverson. And she just grabbed the goalkeeper, pulled the goalkeeper away, had enough time, and she put the ball in for the 1 0 lead here. Now, this game is in favor for Amerga, a well experienced team. They're just playing here with eight players. They gained, like last year, they made it up to the podium with the third place here with their squad. Right now, they were challenged and lost some matches. In the morning, they won. Or let's earlier the day they won against uh, yeah, the Black Mermaids. Yeah, they at, at 9.30. It was in the morning at 9.30. So because they, they had already had a match with a 2-0 victory against the Black Mermaids from Sweden. Yeah, they and had now, the triangular, remember? Yeah, that are Black Mermaids, yes. Amaga and uh, Vienna. And now they are playing for place number four. Five, five, four and, five. and it looks like that they are going to execute here well. So the timeout is over. Both teams have taken the timeout. You see now here. The Vienna ladies here waiting on the on the bottom here to intercept the pass, but this team okay. here from Amaga is super experienced. Nevertheless, they lost the ball in here. Maybe a fast break? Yeah, let's see. Do we see another chance here? No, this is like... They have individual, they have a well, high right individual now, class here at Amager. What, so. I, what I would say, right now, Vienna should be playing with all six players on the yeah. water. No it doesn't if matter if you're yeah. losing 2-0 or 3-0, you need to win here. You need at least to, to make seven. one goal. Yeah to bring the match to penalty shooting. And we see a three throw for Amaga. Two minutes left, the last two minutes of this match. The winner will be fourth of this ladies competition. 32nd Champions Cup. Here being here in Berlin. 31st, 31. 31st, oh, yeah. 31st. In, in, that was last year. Ah, yeah, with the 31st, all right. Okay, so we have now Amaga trying to do a last attack against the basket just to, you know, minute the, <laughs> to have one more score. And uh, also, you know, the attack is the best defense, yeah. uh, Torsten, right? That's, 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 <laughs> that's true, that's true. Of course, it's a bit risky. Maybe even just playing defense is also risky as well. As yeah. There's not, not a real wrong or truth. One but minute. Um, at least... Having the ball is having the control. This is an old quote from football or from a lot of other team sports. So it's much easier here and feels much more comfortable here to have the ball. And now we see her number nine here attacking from above. Or is it number six, May Lindbergh Hansen, giving the ball to captain number 11, Marianne Haydam. And she's like bringing all her strength in the water. She's like... Oh, but at least losing the ball, but then it takes too long here for Vienna now to get to get true to to start their attack. So there's just 30 seconds left. Pushing without ball. Last chance here for Vienna with a three throw. Start quick. Start quick. Go down, Gertz. At least Amaga is doing a great job so far. Now Vienna needs to bring the ball close to the basket soon. Here, just 20 seconds left. 
And again, we see a scrum. This oh, she's the ball falling down, and there's ball is outside the area. No, three throw, throw for Vienna. Nevertheless, just ten seconds left. The time is stopped. No, One the time move. doesn't stop. It's affected. Oh, why did it stop? It should be. Okay. Should not be stopped. So here okay. we see. Well, yeah. Ten seconds left. The last chance here for Vienna. Passing the ball. Five. Four, three, and now here Vienna, Laila List here is like protecting the ball with the scrum. Well done here from the Very girls from game. Amaga. 1-0 and that means... Super great team performance. Amaga is fourth. And Vienna is fifth of this and 31st Champions Cup yeah. in Berlin. And Orca is competition. third. So the final between the women team is going to be a um, very old... Norway against uh, Germany final. <laughs> final. Just to, to summarize this match, finally, so uh, congratulations to Amaga and congratulations also to Dina Iverson. She scored here the 1-0. So I think we will see these girls here celebrating this night because uh, they just arrived here with eight and they did a great job. They just left, mm, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams behind. Just with eight players, this is a super, uh, super great performance. Yep. And we also look forward to the last female match of the day. It will be later on. You will see at 2.30. So in 45 minutes after this match. So now we see the game for place three in the man competition. It will be Molde against the Finnish champion Hesu. And afterwards you see the final of the female competition between Langen and the Norwegian girls from Akaren. But now let's go here to the next match. It's going to be two times, 15 minutes. Two Molde times. Molde and Hemelina Suheltayat. Both teams already played in the morning. In the mo yeah, Molde. very, the very first two games. At, yeah. It's like very, I think the first time in the history of Champions Cup, 8 o'clock was Mals versus Molde. And that was 1-0 within um, the first two minutes. They did the um, score. Christian Förstor scored here from Germany. Then so he made like a, the, the victory goal for his team. And we remember that Malch played the first time 2006. In this championship they gained the okay. third place. And now it's the first time ever that Malch is playing the final in the Champions Cup in history. On the other side we've seen Molde. Winning this cup for, I don't know, 12 years, 10 years, no, 11 uh, years in a row. they won it 10 years and yeah. in a row, 7 or 8. I have to get yeah. the, the, the cup here. I'm going to so we're going to check minute. this, but they're like a Syrian champions here. And they lost in the morning 1-0. And now they're playing here for the third place Seven against, times in a row. against Hesu, their team from Finland, Hem, Hemelinan. Yeah, Hemelinan or Hesu. Hemelinan or Hesu. You know, Hesu or Hemelinan in white. And we're trying to give you a short team list. So let's start with Hemelin, Hemelinan in white. And uh, please excuse my uh, Finnish pronunciation, but I try to do my best. So it's four. You see Martila, number six, Janne Pukeliste, number seven, Rico Rikonon, number eight, Marco Enberg, number nine, Yari Jövi Gorbi, number ten, Rami. Rykkönen, number 12, Jane Zalonen, number 13, Antti Zalonen, number 14, Heiki Luko, number 23, Viktor Krylov, number 33, Alexei Pritsanikov, number 60, Yuri Boyko, number 66, Guy Björk, 79, Ako Luko, number 95, Antti Vatera. And what's here? A player we need to look at is... Ex of course, Yuri Boyko, one of the top scorers here in the EuroLeague. He's originally from Russia, from the Beta team, but he's playing in the Finnish league for uh, Hesu. And uh, this will be maybe a, a player we will see here with super nice, like, scoring tries. And on the other side, we're having the Molde team in blue here, seeing in the, in the screen with the jerseys. Um, Bart Inge Pettersen with number one is unfortunately not here today. Number two, Jacob Lahama, number four, Evan Björnerem, number five, Evan Zervik, number six, Jürgen Ulverstadt, number seven, Eve Björnerem, number eight, Öwind Nyhus, number 